morning. I have had, oh, actually it's not even morning, it's one o'clock. I have had the laziest day, it's been unbelievable. We got up about seven, half seven as usual. And then I was editing the video that's going up today. So, oh, welcome to April Vlogs. This is officially day one. It's the 1st of April. So happy April, everybody. Um, it's a real transition-y month, April, isn't it? Well, I think when you start with the weather at the beginning of April, it really, really transitions over the course of the month and it gets a lot warmer and you definitely make that big shift fully from winter to sort of spring, spring proper. And uh, yeah, nature makes big strides in April as well, doesn't it? So happy April. And if it's your birthday month, like it is mine, uh, happy birthday to you for this month. And speaking of my birthday, I have got here a box uh, that uh, was sent to me by uh, lovely Dominique, my lovely friend Dominique, who is one half of the Wool is the Answer podcast, which she presents with her friend Marie. And together they are Wool is the Answer and they dye, dye and sell yarn and patterns. And they have a lovely live podcast that they film as well. And uh, she has very kindly, Dominique, made me a birthday countdown surprise. And it's all in this box. So I thought I would open day one today. But, I don't want to just keep it in the box. I'm going to put it in a nice bag uh, that uh, so I can have it out and it would look nice. So I've been through my project bag stash. I have many, many project bags and I'm not going to apologize for it because they're all fabulous. Uh, and perhaps one of the most fabulous project bags that I've selected is this one. This is by Emma of Eldenwood Craft. I will link her underneath. I will also link Dominique's podcast underneath, Dominique Marie. Uh, but Emma of Eldenwood Craft, she has a podcast and she makes and sells bags. And this was actually a gift last year because I have my three adorable chickens in the garden, which I'm sure you'll see lots of this month. So I'm gonna use this to put my beautifully wrapped little birthday countdown in. Are they actually, are they numbered? Or do I just pick them at random? Let's see what her note says. She sent me the most gorgeous little card with it. And a little extra card for me to use. Oh no, it's not a card. It's a little notebook. It's a nature journal. Look at that. Oh, I love that. Oh, I will definitely use that as a nature journal. It's 100% recycled card and paper. Uh, the Monthly Illustration Club, brookmarie.co.uk. There you go. Isn't that lovely? Oh, I like that. Anyway, what does she say? Lucky dip with something to open from April 1st. The largest one is for your birthday eve. Okay, let's have a look at the largest one. Uh, yeah, so that's got it written. It's not a book, but open on your birthday eve. So if you, it, we have a tradition in our family of everybody gets a book on their birthday eve. Uh, Lilia got hers the day before the last vlog, uh, but I am going to get her to talk about her books that she got for her birthday because she got loads and her birthday eve book. So she is just she has just turned seventeen. So that might be really interesting if you have readers in your household. Um, who are around that age. Um, she is a prolific reader. I think it's now the end of March. I think she's read seven books already this year and she annotates them all as well. I will get her to share the books that she got. So I'm going to put all of my lovely birthday countdown into my bag. Oh, one's just kind of popped open, this one. So I think I'm going to make this, it looked very intriguing. <laughs> I'll make this my first one to open, seeing as it, seeing as it's kind of, fate has decided for me. The universe has spoken. Well, it fits perfectly, look at that. All in there, ready to dip into throughout the month. Okay, so let's open the first one, which as you can see is popped open. Looks like there's a creature trying to escape. 
<laughs> it's a fabulous faux fur pom-pom uh, to put on a hat. I'm actually on a bit of a hat knitting and crocheting roll at the moment. So this is going to be perfect. And in fact, the hat that I'm about to start, I already have a pom-pom for, but this would also work with the colour. So I could have pom-pom choice now. That is fabulous. Thumbnail. <laughs> Thank you, Dominique. I love it. Oh, I love it. My little pet pom-pom. I've also got here uh, some books I wanted to quickly talk to you about. Oh, so I can't remember the last time I spoke to you about books on this channel, I can't quite remember where I was. So I'll just say that I've linked my Storygraph account, which I joined at the beginning of this year and started at the beginning of this year. I've linked that underneath. Uh, it's a really good app. I prefer it. I've tried Goodreads quite a few times before and didn't really get on with it, but Storygraph I find a lot better just for how my mind works. So I'm on there so you can see what I'm reading currently, what I'm listening to, what I've got lined up and what I've read so far this year. And I read earlier this year The Big Over Easy by Jasper Ford, which is the first of two books in the Nursery Crime Division series, and I really enjoyed it. And now I have finished The Fourth Bear, which is the second book in the series by Jasper Ford. Um, I've said before that he, the world that Jasper Ford writes about is, a, is the real world, but the sort of the line between real and uh, literary and fiction uh, is very, very blurred. And in this case, it's very blurred between nursery rhymes uh, characters. And they really stand well as a proper uh, murder mystery story. Uh, it's just with that fantastical element. I really, really enjoyed it. I did think that this one, unlike the first one, was probably about 50 to 100 pages too long for me. I felt like by by the last 100 pages, I was a bit, I was getting a bit bored. Even though he's a really funny writer, I really enjoy the jokes, I really enjoy the, 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 enjoy the little asides that he does at the beginning of each chapter. Um, yeah, I felt like it could have finished about 100 pages earlier and I would have felt more satisfied with the story, but it's really good. They're basically investigating the disappearance uh, of Goldilocks and trying to work out uh, who did it, who's responsible, and there's a lot of bears involved. And in this world, bears are kind of a, uh, a a section of society that are very much looked down upon by humans. And there are people that really champion the rights of bears. And yeah, it's a re it's really really clever, and I enjoyed it. And now that I finished those, I'm not going to be keeping them, so I might I'm going to put them in my pile to offer to my mum and my sister. Uh, although Sarah, uh, Sarah from the Yarn Mugs podcast, if you're watching and you want to read them, let me know because I'm going to send you another one. So if you want these, I can pop them in the post to you if you like. And uh, I've now moved on to The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is one of my charity shop bargains. I think it was 50p uh, in a charity shop, perfect condition. And so far, I'm really enjoying it. At first, I'm only about 100 pages in. Yeah, about 100 pages in. Uh, at first, it grated on me a bit because the style of writing from the... It's written in two perspectives, so you, you get a bit of the story from the female character and then a bit of the story from the male character. They've obviously both got really interesting background stories that have yet to come out, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's certainly really interesting. I am really enjoying it so far. Certain things seem to move very quickly um, rather than slowly, but again, I'm sure... You know, I'm not far into the book, I'll see how it all comes out in the wash, but I struggled a little bit with the style of writing from the male perspective because it's so different to the way the female uh, character writes, but that's kind of settled in with me now and I've got used to it. So really enjoying this so far. Uh, oh, that turned into a bit of a, a book chat. I've, can you tell I've been watching? <laughs> I've been watching loads of booktube recently. Where's my tissues? Hang on. Sorry, my nose is really running at the moment. Um, I don't know, I don't get hay fever or anything. I think maybe I've just got a, I don't know. Could it be menopausal snot? <laughs> Is that <a> thing? <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yes, can you tell I've been watching a load of booktube videos now I'm really like, oh books. I've been watching uh, What Victoria Read, which was a channel that was recommended, I couldn't remember who recommended um, 
her to me but it, it was Jo. Jo P, thank you so much because she recommended the channel to me. I went over and I watched a couple. I was like, oh, I enjoyed that. So I watched a couple more and I enjoyed them. So then I went back to the beginning and I've just been watching <laughs> all of them from the beginning and it's been brilliant. And then through her, um, I discovered Books and Bargains. I think your name is Charlotte at Books and Bargains. So I've been watching quite a few of her videos as well. And it's just really lovely. It's, um, I, I hadn't heard of Booktube before and I've been really, it's not something I think I would ever do. Although I do like talking about books occasionally, but uh, I've really enjoyed discovering those style of videos and I find them really, really interesting and inspiring to watch. So I will link both of those channels underneath for you as well. This is turning into a bit of a chat rather than a daily vlog. I'm basically up in my bedroom because I've got a ton of tidying to do. And I've sat around on my bottom watching videos and knitting for far too long this morning. And I'm gonna go and get on with it now. I'm pooped. Um, only seconds will have passed for you, of course, but um, I have spent the last hour and a half thoroughly clearing out and cleaning our room. And downstairs is next on my list. I'm not going to do anything too thorough. I'm just going to have a bit of a um, tidy up a visual clutter just to, obviously I can't clear it away because it is um, waiting to sort of go out for the boot sale that we're intending to do and charity shop donations and other other ways you know that the stuff is leaving the house but I am going to just try and organize it a bit so it's easier to sort of navigate around I've also got to clean the kitchen uh, and so on I've been listening to my audiobook I have I have now got two hours and 49 minutes left that's, God, that's quite a bit still to go but I'm beginning to, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm beginning to think that I may have figured out what's going on, but I'm still not 100% sure. But I'm going to continue listening to that whilst I sort out the kitchen and the dining room and downstairs generally. But first I think I'm going to make a cup of lapsang. It's now almost three o'clock, so I think it's time for lapsang and maybe a tiny bit of Lydia's birthday cake from yesterday. Seriously, not our cat, but yes, I did put the box here, especially for her because she took to sleeping up here on this box. So I put an empty one up here and it's her new favorite place to curl up. I'm making a start on moving some of the bits. I've got a couple of boxes that I found during my clear up. So I'm gonna move some bits off of these shelves to go into storage until after the kitchen is finished. Uh, some of the stuff I'm going to move into other locations in the house. Um, but I thought I'd tell you about some of the bits that I'm putting away and why. So I don't like this. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it really. I wonder if it could go in the garden. Um, I made it. Um, it's a, a coil pottery candle holder. I did a, 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 t a weekend course in coil pottery quite a few years ago now and I really love some of the things I made. Uh, and I probably would have liked this more, um, but I don't like the, how the glaze came out. Some battery operated lights in here. I don't, it's quite light in the kitchen, so it's probably not going to, you're probably not going to get the full effect there. <laughs> Looks a bit pathetic. So there's a lot of, um, you know, I made it, so um, there's a lot of value in it for that reason. I just 
maybe it just doesn't go on this shelf. It's quite a rusticy thing. Maybe it, it belongs like amongst books or something. Um, I think it would probably do okay in the garden. It is just pottery. Oh, look, there we go. It's in the dark box. But it's going to go away for now. You can make a decision about that when, when we get them out in the new kitchen. I've got one of my lobster. Ooh, can't get it out. I've got. Uh, this is uh, just a lobster print I bought. I think it's a card. Uh, Dan and I love lobsters. There's lobster decorations all over the house. So they, this will probably definitely, probably definitely, <laughs> most likely go up in the new kitchen. So I'll pop that away safely. I'm going to pad this all out with a bit of newspaper. Uh, this is definitely staying. My dad bought this in an antiques uh, shop. Oops. I, can't, I don't have any sense of um, depth because I'm looking at it through the screen on the camera. Um, my dad bought this in an antiques fair in France. I, I remember it really well. And the man that we bought it from said it was the Clay de Paradis, <laughs> the Key to Paradise. Oh, and the reason he called it that is because it's a wine bottle opener. <laughs> This little guy was, uh, Phoebe made him in a little pottery workshop at a museum in Denmark when we went to Denmark back in 2018 and she made a little monster and he's got his own mushroom <laughs> and I love him so much. So he'll definitely be going out on a shelf in the new kitchen. In fact, I wonder if I might pop him in the living room so I know that he's safe. I'll pop him here and I'll relocate him. This is a puzzle that was in my house growing up for my whole life. And I now have it. I'm moving it very carefully because it's quite a tricky puzzle to put together. It's, uh, it forms a cube and there are four layers and four columns. I'm going to actually put this on the table because Phoebe was wanting to go of it um, the other day and I promised her I'd get it down for her. Be careful, don't drop it. I think we all knew that was going to happen. <laughs> oh well. Phoebe can put it back together. All these little toilet roll creatures are a little project that uh, Phoebe and I did ages ago and they're just so cute. I couldn't bear to take them down. I just thought they were lovely. They may go back up if we have a a uh, good shelf in the new kitchen arrangement. So I'm gonna pop these away in my box. There we go. I've got a little patch I've got to sew on to a blanket there. I'm not gonna go through all of these. This is gonna go away. This is one of my, I just crochet round stones sometimes for fun. I just, it's all freehand. Just make it up as I go along. Um, it's something I very much enjoy. I could probably do with putting this out in the sun to bleach a little bit. It's very heavy. I'm going to put that in a separate box so it doesn't squash anything. And this beautiful thing was a gift from my friend Ali last year or the year before. And it's propped up here temporarily, but it's actually a uh, could go in a window, which it will eventually. But for now, it's been there because I wanted to put it up. But I'm going to wrap that very carefully in newspaper and store that away. Just pop it there for now. Oh, little pig creatures that the girls made behind there. I'll pop those away as well. This is an old teapot. I bought this with my pocket money one year in France. We always went to France on holiday and I bought this in a pottery. It's a lot of pottery here actually, isn't there? In a pottery shop. Um, it's not a very good teapot actually, but I like the look of it. It doesn't, doesn't actually work very well. It doesn't pour well and inside it all crackled. Oh, old earphones in there. I think that's what I used to use before I got my precious uh, AirPods. Yeah, that's kind of all crackled in a way that isn't good inside. But I love, I love this teapot and I love how it looks and it will definitely be in the new kitchen. So I will pop that in here. Oh, this is a 
leaf but I don't know what's been done to it but it's now metal <laughs> and my dad bought me this at Inglenook Winery I don't, I don't I think it was Inglenook Valley Winery in California when I was 15 or 16 years old and I have had it up in my bedroom or kitchen or wherever I've lived ever since I might pop that no, I'll pop it away safely to go in the new kitchen. My dad's grandfather was a, he had his own business way, way back, made his fortune, and this was the name of it. And this is a little tape measure. Pop that away safely, a little bit of family history. This I bought on eBay absolutely donkeys years ago. I always intended to paint it. Let's pop it there. Yeah, I always intended to give it a bit of a sand down and a paint, but I never have. I should do really. Maybe having a new kitchen will encourage me to do it, but it's really great. The, the uh, glass at the front comes up. It's like a little storm, storm lantern. Really like this. So I'll pop that away. Might just pop it up in the bedroom whilst the kitchen is being done. And these are the little pig I used to make and sell these. <laughs> My little hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil piggies <laughs> out of female clay. I've got loads of these, but I shall pop them in the box. And I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Oh, look, this is my singing bowl that my sister bought me. Let's see if I can do it. Um, oh no, it's moving. You have to. I have to hold it really. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest for now or carry on and do it because otherwise this video is going to get way too long. Oh, this is quite a good one. I stole this. <laughs> if you've watched before, you know, I have lots of stolen goods in my house from my misspent youth, uh, usually from bars and restaurants in my uh, sort of late teens, early 20s. Uh, so don't tell Yo Sushi, but this was one of their sake jugs <laughs> in old Compton Street <laughs> in Soho. <laughs> But, you know, probably if it stayed in the restaurant, oh, hello, it would be smashed by now and out of use and somewhere not here. But instead, it's been in every kitchen I've ever had. It's got this cool little, oh, big yawn. That was a big yawn. Cool little thumb holder thing there. And I just love how it looks. Is the focus a bit weird on this? I feel like it's going in and out of focus. I'll have to have a little play with it. Okay. Cat just checking on proceedings, a little wash, and then go back to sleep. I'm going to say goodbye because I've got a feeling that I've talked a lot in this vlog today, and I'm going to go and get on with clearing the rest of this and packing it up. I'm also going to go and give the chickens who are looking very impatient their vegetables, so I might take you down with me to do that. But otherwise, I will see you tomorrow for day two of April vlogs. Tomorrow is Sunday. And it promises to be quite a nice relaxing day. We've got to run kids about here, there and everywhere. But Sundays are the best day of the week. I love Sundays. So tacos tonight. And I don't know what we're having tomorrow yet. But you don't need to know that. Stop talking now. See you tomorrow. Hello girls. Cloud, you are looking so much better. Do you want some veggies? Come <laughs> on. There you go, hey, hey.